Hello everyone and welcome to Butterfly Dreams Crochet. My name is Jeannie and today we will be doing a tutorial to make this wonderful, beautiful mosaic notion pouch cover or canvas bag cover, whatever you want to refer to it as. The link for the graph that I will be using in this tutorial is in the description box down below this video. Make sure to print it off before you begin this tutorial. Now you will need whatever size hook that you need for your for your bag. Um, I will be using this little small bag for this tutorial and I will be using a 4.0 millimeter hook and I'm going to be using the Crafter Secret Acrylic Yarn from Dollar Tree in white and in like a lilac. You will need a stitch marker. You will need a sewing needle in order to attach the cover to your bag. And I will be using the transparent um, thread that you can get from Hobby Lobby or Michaels if they ever have any in. Now I get this at Hobby Lobby when it's um, 50% off on their Sewology Week for about $1.50. So, and come on, focus all the way back down to my table. There we go. So, you'll need a label if you want to put your label on your project. Um, and you'll need a pair of scissors. And you'll need the graph. Now we, traditional mosaic, you work one row at a time and you cut and you come back and you cut. We're not doing that. We're going to be pretty much working this in a round, but more in like an envelope style. So I'm going to move this out of the way. I'm going to bring the graph in and talk about it briefly. Just to explain some of its components and details for you. And this is for those that may have never done mosaic before okay so this is the chart that we'll be using like I said it's in the description box below this video go ahead pause what you're doing pause the video print this graph off so you will have it to go along with this um, tutorial I wanted to discuss the components of the graphs because most mosaics are pretty much the same The only difference I see in this one compared to a lot of them is right here. You don't have numbers by your rows. This box here with the arrow that's pointing up, that means in mosaic that you work a regular single crochet. And most of them have a little grid at the bottom that tells you what each one represents. Over here to the left, you have the arrows that's going the opposite direction pointing down that means that you work a regular single crochet at the end of every row that's if you're working a flat panel like for a blanket they all have alphabets on the sides and what these alphabets represent is your colors so i like to consider a what I refer to as the background color, which is my main color that I will be using. B is like what I refer to as the design color, which is what you see here. Okay? So, A, primary color, B, design color. Also, mosaic charts and graphs, whatever you want to refer to them as, has a box with an X in it and a box that is solid. Nothing in it. So, the box with the X in it, what that means is you will work a front loop only double crochet in the row two rows below. In the loop two rows below. 
The solid squares mean that you will work a back loop only single crochet. Mosaics are worked either in the back loop or the front loop only. The way this notion pouch cover is constructed, there will not be a single crochet at the beginning or a single crochet at the end. So this row here will be eliminated and this row here will be eliminated. To figure out how many stitches we need for our bags, pouches, you want to count from this line here to this line right here. How many boxes are in between? This one has 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's let, that lets me know that I have to do my stitch count in multiples of 12. Whether it be 36, 48, 60, 72, whatever size notion pouch you're using, do it in multiples of 12 and measure it and make sure that it fits from one corner to the next. That's all you have to do. Once you determine that, you will add one chain. That is it. And that will be our turning chain. And when we work down, based on if you have 36 stitches, you will chain 37. If you have 48, you will chain 49. And when you work your last single crochet on that chain, you should have 48 single crochets or 36 single crochets. Again, make sure you print this graph off. Um, and to determine what a pattern, complete portion of the pattern is, that is identified by this dark line here in the middle. So from here to here is a pattern repeat. And that includes every row up to the top. This side over here completely mirrors this side. And when we join, we will start with a double crochet. When we start the graph, our first stitch will be a front loop only double crochet. Our last two stitches will be one, two front loop double crochets only. When we slip stitch to join and we pull it tight like I will show y'all, we will have three double crochets together. Which if I move over, that is exactly what you should have. But because we're working with our first one first and our two, we will end with two double front loop only doubles, but we will actually have three there together and you'll see that as we work up the pattern so I'm gonna move the graph out of the way bring mine back in now how many single crochet rows you need to do based on this is solely dependent on your bag now I can tell you that this measures right at three and a quarter inches if i bring my bag in that i will be using and i place it here like this that lets me know that if i do this many single crochets on my bag i'm not going to have enough bag left to finish the graph so, I will be doing the single, the, the first, the foundation rows. Then I will be doing one more row. Then I will come in with my next color. But I will, we'll get to all that as we work it up. But you're going to have to determine how many single crochets you need to do here at the bottom before you actually start your graph. And then you're going to have to have enough room to at least have, I say, two or three rows of single crochets across the top. 
because you want to end with a single crochet row up here so we can attach it to our zipper right there start our chain all right so we're going to start out with a slip knot on our hook and we're going i'm going to chain 36 plus one for 37 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, plus one for my turning chain. Remember the loop on your hook does not ever count as a stitch in crochet. So this is my first stitch, my first stitch from my hook, that's my second stitch. We're going to work into that second stitch, but before I do, I'm going to place my stitch marker between both of those loops on that turn on that first chain from my hook. Now I'm going to insert into that second chain and I'm going to work a single crochet. And I will continue working one single crochet in every chain in the top of that chain until I get to the end. Do not work in the back bump of this chain because we're going to work on the other side of the chain and come back to our stitch marker. So just like that and work one single crochet all the way to the end and I'll meet you when you get to your last chain. Okay, so I've worked down the length of my chain with one single crochet in the top of every chain. Now we're going to turn over and we're going to work back down this chain to our stitch marker. Just like that, back down. What I like to do to identify because you don't want to increase because if you increase you're not going to get the effect that we're looking for. This stitch right here is the one we want to work into next. And this stitch here is part of that stitch right there. So I'm going to place my stitch marker right here until I work into that first stitch because sometimes it can pull it and you lose that one but you don't want to lose that one because if you do you're going to be short a stitch so I'm going to remove my needle I'm going to insert into that bar wrap my yarn pull through wrap and pull through both loops I just made my single crochet in the stitch directly across from my last chain Remove my stitch marker and now I'm going to work one single crochet in the next stitch and I'm going to work one single crochet in every stitch until I get to my stitch marker. So just continue working one single crochet back down that chain in every stitch. And when you get to your stitch marker, you should have 72 single crochets. And I will just keep working down. To the stitch marker. I'm almost there now, right? <laughs> I know y'all have been wanting me to do this, and I appreciate y'all's patience.
and I am going to show you how to connect this to your and that's our last one right there just like that now I'm going to pause and I'm going to count my stitches and make sure that I have 72 okay so I remove my stitch marker from my turning chain and we're going to insert in between those two loops if you a tight crochet like me it's going to be hard to get that hook through there and we're going to work a single crochet in that turning chain and that gave me 72 stitches we're going to chain one make it kind of tight and we're going to put our stitch marker back into that chain one just like that we're going to continue around working one single crochet in the back loop only and let me identify the back loops for you okay you have your V here at the top this loop closest to you is considered front loop this stitch V furthest away is considered the back loop so we're going to work in that back loop only of every single crochet around so continue with one single crochet back loop only all the way around and I'll meet you when I get back to my stitch marker okay so I made it around to my stitch marker I'm going to remove it and I am going to insert my hook in there now so we're going to continue going we're going to slip stitch into that chain one pull it kind of tight and chain one now we're going to work one more row a single crochet in the back loop only all the way around and let me put my stitch marker in my chain one space right here so continue working one single crochet in that back loop only all the way around and then I will introduce my next color which for me will be like a lilac purple almost about the color of my hook so just continue working one single crochet in the back loop only until you get back to your stitch marker and I will meet you when we get there okay so I made it to the end I've joined to the back loop of my chain one I'm now going to introduce my secondary my second color which in this case is the lilac and I'm going to join with a slip stitch pull that yarn tight that white tail tight I'm going to chain one and put my stitch marker in that chain one space now I am going to continue working one single crochet in the back loop only all the way around in every single crochet back loop only all the way around back loop back loop remember all singles are worked in the back loop only and all doubles will be worked into the front loop from two rows below which we will start on our next round 
So continue working one single crochet in the back loop only. And I will meet y'all when we get back to our stitch marker. So this is how it should be looking like an envelope. Okay, so I've made it back around to my stitch marker. And I am going to remove it. And I will be joining back now with my white yarn. And I did not mention earlier, but when you are switching colors, you do not cut your yarn. You just simply drop it and keep going. And I'm trying to keep this from getting tangled up here. <laughs> okay. So I am going to back loop only of that chain one and pull through with my white. I'm going to grab the tail of that purple and pull it tight. Chain one. You want it tight. That's going to close up the gap. Put your stitch marker back on your chain one stitch. Now we're going to begin the graft. <clears throat> so for our graft, the first stitch of the graft is going to be a front loop only double crochet. Let's identify our front loops. Okay. If you look here, you have these little bars from two rows below, right here. These are your front loops only, right here. All these little bars are considered your front loops only. And when I say we're going to work a front loop only double crochet, we're going to be working it in those loops right there. So this is my first stitch here. And right here is my front loop. You, I'm, I'm working with white yarn. So I want to work into the white loop. So we're going to wrap our yarn around our hook. Grab that front loop. Pull your yarn through. You should have three loops on your hook. Wrap. Pull through two route pull through two now the next is we're going to work one back loop only single crochet you can fold that over to know where your next stitch is going to be if you're not sure this single crochet right here is for that front loop only double crochet so i want to work my back loop in that stitch right there so insert into that back loop only and work a single crochet. We need to work two front loop only doubles. So this loop here is next to that front loop. So this loop went with my single crochet. So I'm going to come to this loop right here. And I'm going to work a front loop only double crochet. Just like that. I'm going to go to the next loop right here. And I'm going to work a front loop double crochet. So if you're looking at your graph, we've done the first X, which is a front loop double crochet. We worked our back loop only single. Then we have the next two boxes that have an X in them, which represents a front loop only double crochet in the next two stitches. The next stitches is one single crochet in the back loop only for the next three. So one, two, three, back loop only single crochet. 
that's one, two, and three. Now our next two boxes have X's, so we're going to work a front loop, double crochet only, in the next two. Just like that. Then we'll work a back loop only single crochet. Then we will work two front loop only double crochets. So this is one and two. Now we're going to repeat from the beginning. So we're now going to work another front loop double crochet for a total of three, our two at the end, and our one at the beginning. We will now work one back loop only single crochet, two front loop only double crochets, one back loop only single crochet in the next three stitches that's two and three two one front loop double crochet in the next two so we have one and two one back loop only single crochet and then one front loop double crochet in the next two and that gets you to the bold line in the middle now you're going to come back to the beginning and do another double crochet front loop only then one back loop only single crochet then two front loop only doubles and you're going to repeat that all the way around and when you get back here to your stitch marker you will have only worked two um, front loop double crochets so I'm going to work one more front loop double I'm going to work a back loop single. I'm going to work one front loop double over the next two stitches. One. And two. I'm going to work one back loop only single crochet over the next three stitches. Two. And you may have to flip this, push that down in order to see your stitches I'm going to work two front loop only doubles I'm going to work one back loop only single I'm going to work two front loop doubles one in the first stitch and one in the next stitch I'm going to work one more front loop only double because I'm back at the beginning and one back loop single and the next stitches that you will do will be two front loops three back loop singles two front loop doubles back loop single three front loop doubles and continue that till we get here and when you have two stitches left and I'll meet y'all at that point just continue that pattern on around okay so I've made it here to the getting close to my stitch marker I've done my two uh, front loop only doubles my one single I got two stitches left now I am going to work into see how that slip stitch had worked to loose there so you want to pull that tight 
it looked like I had three stitches left. You're going to work one back uh, front loop double crochets in here, which is where we will end at the bold line in the middle of the graft. So wrap yarn around your hook, grab that front loop and work a double crochet, wrap, grab that front loop, and work a double crochet. Now we're going to remove our stitch marker, pull that tight again if you need to, and we're going to go into that back loop only of that chain one, pull that white tight, and bring your purple through and join with a slip stitch. Pull that white tight to the point where you really can't tell that it's a slip stitch. And that is going to close that up and make that the three doubles that we have here. Let me chain my one and go ahead and put my stitch marker. Look, you chained one, put your stitch marker back into your chain one space. The next row is just a simple back loop only single crochet all the way around. Continue that around until you get to your stitch marker and I will meet you when I make it back to my stitch marker. So this is what it should start looking like now. It's like you got a little string of yarn running through that you actually fed through, but you didn't. And I'm going to bring my pouch in again and just show you how it fits right in there like a glove. And this is what it should look like. And we're just going to continue up with our pattern, swapping colors every row. So I'm back here at my stitch marker. I want to join my white. I'm going to grab that purple tail and pull it tight. I'm going to snug on that white before I connect it. I'm going to remove my stitch marker. And I'm going to join in that back loop of that chain one. Drop my purple. Pull it tight before I do. Grab that white. And pull through. And I'm going to pull that purple tight too. Now we're moving to row three. Chain one. And our first stitch on row three is a back loop single crochet right here in this first stitch. Then it's two front loop double crochets, which is going to be here and here because this is for our first. Remember our first stitch from the row below was a double. So that first stitch for that single back, back loop only single is on top of that, what we would say on top of the double. So this is my first front loop double crochet. This is my second one, which is on top of that double from the row below, two rows below. Now we're going to work one back loop single crochet three front loop double crochets in the next three stitches. One, two, and three. One back loop single. One front loop double in the next two stitches. And we're now fixing to work one back loop single 
in the next two stitches which gets us to that dark bold line and then we come back to the beginning so our next stitch will be a back loop only single then one front loop double crochet over the next two stitches one back loop single crochet one front loop double over the next three stitches this is two this is three one front loop back loop single crochet <laughs> you can get tongue twisted with these then one front loop double crochet over the next two stitches that's one and two and then we want to work one back loop single over the next two and that ends that pattern complete pattern so we're going to start back from the beginning and we're going to work one back loop single crochet in the next stitch one front loop double crochet in the next two stitches that's one that's two we're going to work one back loop only single crochet we're going to work one front loop sing double crochet in the next three so this is one that is two and that is three we're going to work and, and when you get to your corner sometimes it can be kind of hard to see where you got your next stitch to go so if you fold this in fold this over and count one two three my next stitch is going to go right here in the fourth one and that's a back loop only single just like that then we're going to work two front loop double crochets one in each of the next two stitches so that's one that's two then we're going to put one back loop single crochet in the next three one and two and the third one is back at the beginning just repeat that pattern all the way to your stitch marker which I did not put in mine but I know this is my chain one here and when you get you should have two stitches left and those will be single crochets in the back loop only so continue working all the way around so this is our first back loop only single crochet from the beginning of the graph and just complete until you have two stitches left okay so i made it here to the end i have my two stitches left and i'm going to work one back loop only single crochet in them going to insert my hook into my chain one stitch in the back loop only pull that white hold it and pull my purple through and if that white loosens up that's okay just grab it and pull it tight and this is what we should look like now just like that now we're going to move on to row four which is an easy row i call them easy <laughs> so we're going to chain one and if you need to put your stitch marker there put it there now our first stitch for row four is a front loop double crochet which is our front loop right here and work that front loop double then we're going to work nine single crochets in the back loop only so one 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that should get you to your three front loops in purple right here. Or whatever color you're doing it in. We're going to work one front loop double. One back loop only single crochet. And we're fixing to start back from the beginning. So we're going to work one more front loop only double. Repeat that. So you're going to work after this. You're going to put nine back loop only single crochets, which should get you to right here. So that's two, four, six, eight, nine. Then you're going to work a front loop only double, a back loop only single, and a front loop only double. Then you will repeat that all the way around. And when you get to the end, you should have, when you get to your stitch marker, let me put mine there. When you get to your stitch marker, you should have two stitches left. One will be a front post double, and the other one will be a back loop only single crochet. And that will be the end of that round. Continue that, and I'll meet you when we get to the end. Okay, I'm here at the end. I got my two stitches left. I'm going to work my front loop only double crochet. And my last stitch will be my back loop only single crochet. And this is what it looks like now. So you can see it's building up. Now we're going to move on to row five. Which is going to be another pretty simple row to do. And I will work one repeat with you. And then I will leave the rest for you to do. Because I know y'all can do this. Alright, I'm going to go in that back loop of my chain one. Pull my white through. Pull that purple tight chain one, place my stitch marker, and I, our first stitches is going to be one back loop only single crochet in the first three stitches, so that's two and three. Now we're going to work one front loop double crochet in the next two stitches, one back loop only single, two front loop double crochets, one in each of the next two stitches. We're going to work one back loop only single over the next three stitches. We're going to work one front loop only double, which is going to be in between your two front loop doubles from the row below. And we're going to work back at the beginning, one back loop only single in the next three stitches, one front loop only double in the next two stitches, one back loop only single in the next stitch and one front loop only double in the next two stitches one back loop only single in the next three stitches that's two and three one front loop only double in the next stitch And then you're back to the beginning. So once you place your front loop double crochet in between your two front loop doubles from 
the previous row you will start back at the beginning and repeat that whole row so our next stitches would be three back loop singles then two front loop doubles one back loop single two front loop doubles three back loop singles and then one double and then just repeat it so continue to repeat that all the way around and remember when you work that front post double crochet in between those two front post doubles from the row the previous row you know you're fixing to start back over at the beginning of your graph so go ahead and work that and i'll meet y'all when we get back to the end okay i'm here at the end and i've worked my three back loop singles i have one stitch left and that will be a front loop only double crochet and sometimes it can be a little hard to get up underneath there because we're pulling that slip stitch tight so there we go i'm going to remove my stitch marker i'm going to go into the back loop of that chain one and rejoin with my purple and pull that tight now we're moving on to row six so on row six we start out with one back loop only single crochet in the first two stitches i've chained one I'm going to put my stitch marker. So in our next stitch, I'm going to work a back loop single. And in the next stitch, a back loop single. Then I'm going to work a front loop only double. Then I will work one, two, three, four, five back loop only singles. One, two, three four and five then I will work a front loop only double then five back loop only singles one two and three gets us to the end of our graph where the black dark black line is at and then the beginning is two so my next ones will be one back loop only single then a front loop only double so what we're doing five back loop only singles so two four five see how this little design is coming this will be a front loop double then we'll work one two three four five back loop singles and this last one here will be a front loop only double and this is the effect that we're looking for continue working five back loop only singles one front loop double five back loop singles one front loop double so it's five back loop only singles, one front loop double, five back loop only singles, one front loop double. Repeat that all the way around. Okay, so I've worked my five singles and I've got one double, one front loop double done. I got three stitches left and that will be the last three back loop only single crochets. So just like that. Now I will remove my stitch marker and I will switch over to the white. And grab that purple and pull it tight. So this is what it should look like now. You should start seeing those little points. So we have one, two there, three, four, five, and six. So 
so we'll have one on the corners. See? All right. So, okay. We're going to chain one. Grab that purple and pull it tight one more time. Now we're going to work one back loop only single crochet in the next two. Wait. Yep. Row six. Next two. Nope. We're on row seven. I'm sorry, y'all. We're on row seven. So row seven starts with one back loop only single. Then we're going to do a front loop only double. Then back loop only single one, two, and three. Front loop only double. Back loop only single one two, three, front loop only double, and then front back loop only single one and two, and that gets us to our dark bold line. So we're coming back to the beginning, which is to the far right. We're going to work one more back loop only single. Then one front loop only double. One back loop single in the next three. One, two, and three. One front loop only double in the next stitch. One back loop only single in the next three stitches. That's one, two, and three. Front loop only double in the next stitch. Then we're coming to the end, which is one back loop only single. One back loop only single in the next stitch. So repeat that until we get to the end and I'll meet y'all at the end. Okay, so this is what it should be looking like. I've worked my last stitches. I did my last front loop double and my two back loop singles. This is my chain one. I'm going to go insert my hook into the back loop of that chain one. Pull my white tight and bring up my purple. And pull that white tight again. Now we're moving on to row eight. So we're going to chain one. And we're going to work our first stitch as a front loop only double crochet. We're going to work one back loop single crochet over the next three stitches. That's one, two, and three. We're going to work a back loop only, a front loop only double. Back loop only single. And back, uh, front loop only double. We're going to work one back loop only single over the next three stitches. We're going to work a front loop only double. A back loop single. A front loop double. Back loop single three times. That's two, three. Front loop only double. Back loop single, front loop double, back loop single three, one, two, three, front loop double, back loop single, and front loop double. Then we're going to work one back loop, single crochet in the next three, front loop double, 
and we're, you will repeat that all the way around okay so I'm coming up here to the end I got two stitches left I'm gonna work my front loop only double and I'm going to work my back loop only single and I'm going to join my white yarn by inserting into the back loop of that um, chain one and this is what it should look like we're now moving on to row nine I've joined with my slip stitch and I got a chain one I'll put my stitch marker back there now we're going to do three back loop only single crochet so one back loop single crochet in each of the next three stitches that's three we're going to do a front loop double crochet in the next stitch we're going to do three back loop single crochets one in each of the next three stitches we will work one front loop double crochet in the next stitch we will work one back loop only single crochet over the next three stitches we will put one front loop only double crochet into the next stitch work three back loop only single crochets over the next three stitches one front loop double crochet over the next stitch one back loop single crochet in the next three stitches one front loop double crochet into the next stitch and continue doing that all the way around and I will meet y'all when we get to the stitch marker okay I'm here to my last stitch and it says I need to work a front loop only double crochet and remember in this stitch here it can always be a little difficult to get under but you can get underneath there just make sure you get underneath all of the loop and front loop double so this is what it should be looking like now and we're going to move on to row 10 we're going to remove our stitch marker insert in the back loop of that chain one drop your white yarn or whatever color you're working with and bring in your other color and pull that white yarn tight chain one now we're going to work one back loop single crochet over the next two stitches so one two one front loop double crochet in the next stitch we're going to work five back loop single crochets so one two three four and five and we're going to repeat that one front loop double crochet now we're going to work five back loop singles two three four five front loop double crochet five back loop singles so that will be the repeat five back loop single crochets one front loop double five back loop single crochets one front loop double so just continue doing that all the way around and i will meet y'all when we get back to the end okay so i've worked my last front loop double crochet we should have three stitches left 
I'm going to work one single crochet in the back loop only in those last three stitches and that gets me to my chain one I'm going to insert my hook into that back loop of that chain one pull that purple tight grab my white and slip stitch and I'm going to pull that purple even tighter there we go chain one now we're moving on to row 11 we're going to work a front loop double crochet in the first two stitches so that's one and two one back loop single crochet over the next three one front loop double crochet one back loop single over the next three stitches we're going to work one front loop double crochet over the next two stitches one back loop single crochet one front loop double over the next two stitches one back loop single crochet over the next three one front loop double crochet one back loop single crochet over the next three singles two front loop double crochets over the next two stitches one back loop single crochet one front loop double crochet over the next two stitches one back loop single over the next three one front loop double one back loop single over the next three one front loop double over the next two one back loop single and one front loop double over the next two one back loop single over the next three one front loop double one back loop single over the next three two front loop doubles one in each of the next two stitches one back loop single one front loop sink double into the next two stitches three back loop singles one front loop double one back loop single in the next three stitches one front loop double over the next two stitches one back loop single one front loop double over the next two stitches one back loop single over the next three one front loop double one back loop single over the next three and we're down to our three stitches we're going to do one front loop double over the next two and our last stitch will be a back loop single only join in that 
back loop of that chain one pull that white tight grab your purple and slip stitch and pull that white tight chain one and this is what it should look like now right there now we're moving on to row 12 which is our last row and we will start by putting one single crochet in the back loop only over the next four stitches so I have chain one I'm going to work one back loop single crochet in the next four that's two that's three that's four we'll work one front loop double crochet one back loop single crochet one front loop double crochet and we will work nine singles one two three four five six seven eight nine all in the back loops one front loop double one back loop single one front loop double so you will work the next nine back loop only single crochets then you will work a front loop only double back loop single front loop double and repeat that all the way around okay so row 12 has been completed you should have finished off with five back loop only single crochets you can go ahead and join with a slip stitch changing over to your white yarn remember always go into that back loop and then tighten up your purple now we're going to try this on for size i like to say <laughs> grab my pouch I always like to unzip it and stick my hand in it just to make sure I get my corners in my corners. Okay, and I got it all the way to the bottom. No, no, I don't either. okay now I do all right so now that we have done row 12 we will finish this off with some single crochets and we'll do one or two rows of a decrease so we'll alternate the colors in between we'll do so many rows in white and do a purple and then finish off with the white at the top all right so what i want you to do now is go ahead and work one back loop only single crochet all the way around and do that for two rows and once you have two rows of back loop only single crochets done in the whatever color you're working with mine is the white I will meet you at the end of row two when I've completed two complete passes of the white okay I've completed two rows in the back loop only single crochets around in my white I have already joined with my purple I'm going to chain one and I'm just going to continue working one single crochet in the back loop only around with my purple when I get to the end I will put it back on my bag um, to see if I want to do another round in purple or if I will only have enough for to do two more rounds in the white so I will meet y'all at the end of this row okay so I've put it back on my bag and I still got about a little over half an inch left 
so i'm gonna go ahead and make one more pass with the back loop only single crochets with my purple but this time i'm going to do a decrease um i'm gonna do at least four decreases so let's go ahead and get that done okay i'm gonna insert into that back loop of that chain one slip stitch chain one and work one back loop single crochet So I work nine, I'm gonna do 10 and then I'm gonna decrease. Now I'm going to do the invisible decrease. I insert into the back loop, turn my hook over with my head pointing down, go to the next stitch in that back loop and do that. Pull through both of those and then work my single crochet. I'm gonna work Continue working in the back loop only. And see, it's hard to tell where you did a decrease. I did 10 more. I'm going to do another decrease. I'm going to grab that back loop only. Come bring it up, go into the back loop of the next stitch, wrap my yarn and pull through both of those loops, wrap and pull through two. That's the second decrease. And I'm going to continue working one back loop around till I get to the other side past my edge here. Okay. So, three, four, five. I'm doing about every 10 stitches. but only in only in the straight part so do a decrease back loop back loop route pull through both of those loops route pull through both one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and decrease back loop back loop of the next stitch route pull through both of those loops route pull through two it's called an in, of invisible decrease and then just continue to the end and then we will switch over to our white and we will continue working back loop only single crochets when we switch over to the white and we will not do any more decreases i'm going to check this now and see how it fits on my bag and there we go so two more rows of the white will be perfect and um 
we're just going to work a back loop only single crochet around in the white for two rows once you have the end of row two i will meet you back there you can actually go ahead and cut your purple off and as you go around you can sew uh, crochet over your end and what i like to do here since it's on the inside is just snug that up with a knot and then crochet over my purple end so one single crochet chain one and work one single crochet in the back loop only all the way around until you have completed two rows and I will meet y'all at the end of row two and okay so I've completed two rows I still need to do at least one more row so I'm going to go ahead and do that in white um, that way I won't leave off with purple at the top plus I've already cut my purple off so go ahead and if you still have a little have this much left go ahead and do one more row of um, back loop only single crochets and I'll meet you at the end of row three okay so I've completed three rows in the white and my last single crochet row goes right at that fabric portion of that zipper and that is what we want just like that and we don't have too many extra stitches due to our decreases for the corners for the sides here so you can go ahead and at this point we can chain one cut our white pull it through and secure it now I will weave this in okay so I'm gonna take my darning needle and weave in my tail keeping it on the inside cut it now I'm going to get my sewing needle and my transparent thread so if you wanted to put a label on this is where you would put it now instead of waiting until you attach your bag so I am actually going to put this one on that says handmade and it has a butterfly I have my invisible thread ran through my needle and I'm going to start here in this corner very carefully I got a little knot in the end and I'm just going to pull till it stops go back through the next hole there we go now I'm gonna turn this over grab my yarn my thread and I am going to loop this through and tie it in a knot just like that to the to the crochet and I'm going to do that multiple times remember this is not going to be seen and then I'm going to cut that extra tail a little bit shorter but not all the way down to my crochet then I'll make sure my thread is even and making sure my label is straight I'm going to go back and come up to the other right here 
go back down the other side get off of there then I'm gonna with with I'm not gonna cut it I'm gonna come down over here to this this one go through there let me get everything out of the way <laughs> Come here. And I am going to go back through each one again. Just to make sure it's secured. There we go. Just that one I do. Now I'm going to take my bag. Now if you open this up and you want your pull to be on the left side, turn it to the right. If it's open when you insert it into your bag for us to attach it to the bag now. So... I put it in, make sure it's all down in my corners. Okay. Now when I, when I close this, my pull will be on my left side. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come through this single crochet right here, just like that. Now we're going to attach to the top of our bag like this through every single crochet around. Make sure that you go behind the zipper I know y'all can't see this thread but you're working it back and forth just like you would if you were doing a, a single crochet just make sure that you don't go over the top of your zipper with a stitch. And just keep going back and forth. Now you can do more than one stitch at a time. I usually do about two. Only because this thread is so flimsy and it gets hard to see now when we get here to the corner and you may have to pull it up that's fine but when we get here to the corner we want to go through every stitch in that corner and I come back this way
now we're going to come to this side and come at an angle and go through there then we're going to come back through here and come back through here again And this is why I use a long needle. I got these from Walmart in the sewing section. And now you just come back and do your single crochet attachments. Just like that just make sure that you kind of have this even as you're sewing because you can do it crooked <laughs> I have before and you don't want to bring it too close to your zipper because you don't want it, your zipper catching on your crochet and you can pull this tight And you can do this, weave it back and forth like this. And then pull it. I use, I just go through every single through both of those loops all the way around my bag just try to make sure whatever thread you're using that you have enough to get all the way around your bag without having to add more to it I know sometimes we guesstimate our wrong it's always better to waste a little than it is to have to cut it and tie it in a knot and start over again I like to be able to keep going now we're going to do the same thing here on this side as we did on the other side But here, I come here, go down, I come back through and grab that one. Then I go back through there. To really secure those edges. And then I come over here on this side, grab that one, come back over here, grab that one, come back and grab that one. And now I just continue working my single, my stitches through my single crochets. This thing gets in my way I cut this off and I attach my own 
zipper pull. I'll either do beads or a pom pom and put it on a keychain. Or if you got a nice stitch marker that you want to put on there, you could definitely do that. Lord, I done made a boo boo here somewhere. Yep. I gotta figure out how to get this. Okay. I went, I split the yarn, I split the thread. Which can happen when you call yourself doing more than one stitch at a time. Thought I had one over my zipper. <laughs> and I started at the end of my label. And I will go right past it. A couple of stitches. Just making sure that I got all of them. And now what I do... up one more time go back down and now I'm going to take this and go through here like so now I'm going to go through and I'll do that a couple of times Then I will cut kind of a long tail, split them, and tie them in a knot. And then cut it. And you might have to put your hand in there and straighten your bag back out. So that's what it looks like on the inside once you're done. And that's what it looks like completed. So by doing the decrease rows, it kind of brought this in a little bit. Ain't it pretty? I hope y'all enjoy it. Let me know what y'all think. And like I said, I cut this off. And I will put my own zipper pull on there. So you could put something like this on there to have as a zipper pull. Um, you could take something like a charm and put it on a key ring and put it on there. So, you can do whatever you want to for a zipper pull. Does not matter. I will more than likely do a small bead handle. So, if they want it like a wristlet, they can put it on their wrist and um, use it as like a little wallet. So I hope y'all enjoy this. I know it's a long tutorial, but 
just how it ended up having to be um y'all make sure to send me pictures when y'all make it and until next time see y'all in the youtube street